So, um, Kendra Harrison is with us. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, thank you also for racing tomorrow. We're looking forward to another uh, highlight of, of the evening tomorrow to have you racing in this uh, 100 meter hurdle field. Uh, the, your journey here in Zurich started already last uh, yesterday when, when you flew to, to Langnau um, to the kids clinic. Did, how did you enjoy the flight to this, uh, to this place which is so different to what we have here? <laughs> you know, it's a really beautiful um, scenery and I love seeing this part of the world and you know the kids they were awesome and you know this entire experience was it was just really enjoyable i heard that your father and sister are also flying is that correct yes um, my dad was in the navy and he flew helicopters and my sister she's in the air force so she flies planes as well okay but nothing for you or did you try <laughs> yesterday <laughs> no i didn't try um you know i tried the military route um, in high school and I, it wasn't for me <laughs> Okay, but as a passenger, passenger, that was was okay for you. Yes, uh, as a passenger, it was fun. So, was it the first time to fly a helicopter, or no? It was my second. Okay, so talking about flying, when I see you running or flying over these hurdles, I'm always impressed with because it it looks so yeah so perfect as as probably nobody else uh, of of the athletes. What is the secret behind your, your technique? I'm not sure if there's a secret, but it's just a lot of hard work and really studying your event and realizing what you need to fix and actually fixing it. Um, so that's probably the secret. So you think you do more technique training than others? Could that be a reason? Um, possibly. You know, technique is my number one thing that coach tries to make me, you know, be able to do. And, you know, I really enjoy the technical aspect of the hurdles. Um, you know, I love researching and, and watching how other hurdlers um, hurdle and seeing what they do well and kind of seeing where I need to improve, that kind of thing. So. Okay. Um other topic, maybe coming back a bit to your family, um, you, you've been 11 children and um, I imagine that, that it's, it was quite early in your life important to enforce yourself towards your, your sisters and brothers. Uh, could that be also an advantage now in sports where you need similar skills? <laughs> um, you know, having five younger than me and five older than me, um, sports was one way that I was able to get my parents' attention. You know, everybody in my family had, you know, their gift or their talent that they loved to, loved to do, and track was one thing that I was able to do. And, you know, any sport that I did, I excelled in it, and I wanted to excel in it. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just glad that, you know, track's got me this far. Talking about tomorrow, what do you expect? What did you hear also about Zurich? I guess it's the first time, right? Yes, it's my first time. What, what do you expect? What did you hear about this meet also? I heard this meet, um, you know, the crowd's awesome. I heard that the track is really fast and to expect some fast times. Okay. So, floor is yours. Please ask the questions. As we la on the live stream, please wait until we have the microphone available. you going for your third win in a row at a Diamond League meet. Um, what would that trifecta sweep mean to you if you were to win? And uh, is it at all, uh, um, considering you weren't at, in Rio, is that kind of a, a encouraging <laughs> backup? <laughs> yeah. You know, after not making the Olympic team, this was one of my goals, which was to win, you know, all of the Diamond League meets that I'm in and to collect the trophy. Um, you know, I've been training hard since the Olympics, so not, you know, winning tomorrow would really, um, I don't know, I wouldn't like that. So, you know, that's my number one goal is to get on the line and, and to come across that line first. Other questions?
Hello. Uh, you are speaking about technique, but what is for you? What is uh, the difference in your sensations between a twelve twenty and twelve four or twelve five? Because it's really really fast. And what is your sensation? Um. Meaning, like my technique, like where. Um, I would probably have to say coming off the hurdle. You know, I'm able to, you know, most hurdlers, when they get out, everyone can go over the first five hurdles uh, really fast, but then they start decreasing in their speed. And, you know, I start decreasing in my speed a lot slower, th slower than everybody else. Um, you know, I think that's why I'm able to, it kind of looks like I'm pushing away, but really they're just, they're just slowing down at a, a faster rate than me. And, um, you know, my trail leg, being able to run off, that's one of the number one things that I'm able to do uh, really well, and that's one of the things that my coach uh, really pushed for me to be able to do. And, you know, last year I did not have that. I didn't have a trail leg, and, you know, I was just like some of the other hurdlers. I get out really well, and, you know, after hurdle five, six, seven, eight, I start really uh, slowing down really fast. So it's probably my trail leg. Hi. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned that you, you've watched a lot of videos online and, and studied other hurdlers. Have you ever watched videos of you know, some of the, the past legends like the former world record holder Don Cover or Gail Devers, athletes like those? Um, yes. I think the, the one hurdler that I used to watch a lot and still do is Sally Pearson. You know, Gail De De Devers, she was really fast. You know, I have some of that aspect as well. You know, speed is like a really important thing in this race. And, um, you know, Sally, she has that combination. She had the speed, she has the technique. So, you know, watching them and kind of incorporating it in what I do, um, I think that's probably what's gotten me uh, to be running the way that I'm running now. Uh, speaking about technique again, uh, do you do you watch men technique? Uh, it's a, it is an inspiration for you. Not really. I don't really watch the men hurdlers, um, just because you know their technique is a lot different than ours. Their hurdlers, their hurdles are way taller than ours, so you know their technique is a lot, uh, you know, efficient for their height. You know, the girl hurdlers, you know, the hurdles aren't that high. So our, we were able to keep running really over the hurdles. And men hurdlers, they really got to hurdle the hurdle, if that makes sense. <laughs> had you wish that uh, your hurdlers had, uh, your, your had uh, been uh, higher? Do I want them to be higher? Yeah, do you want to, the, her, the, the, the women hurdler to be higher? <laughs> For myself, no. Um, you know, I'm one of the shortest hurdlers out there. So, you know, raising it, that would really, um, I re would really, it would really change my form and I would really have to, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, not for me. <laughs> so they are good as they are. Yeah. How was it for you to see the triple win from the US team at the Olympics? And do you think it's fair, the, the trial system? Yes, I do think that the trials are fair. You know, it's the fairest way to make the USA team. Um, you know, having it any other way, it wouldn't give everyone a, the right chance or opportunity. And, you know, the USA trials, it's kind of like a mini Olympics. If you can get through the USA trials, you can get through the Olympics. And, you know, being able to run under pressure, you know, I think that is one of the biggest things you gotta be able to do at this stage. And that's something that I was not able to do well. And that's something that I'm still learning how to do. And, you know, watching the USA team get one, two, three, it was exciting. And, you know, I wouldn't have, I would, I actually expected that they would do that, you know. Um, 
the USA team is so strong in this event, uh, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Uh, you mentioned you might be back to the 400 hurdles in the future. Is, is that going to be next season or maybe later? Um, my coach and I are still thinking about it, but the 400 hurdles is something that I still want to do. Um, you know, getting the buy in the 100 hurdles, it would allow me to start training for the 400 hurdles and maybe doing a double at uh, Worlds next year. But, you know, the IAAF would have to change some of the rules because I think the 100 and 400 hurdles are on the same day. Um, but, you know, me and my coach are still thinking about it and whether I do it this year or next year, um, but I'm, I'll definitely be trying to do the 400 hurdles um, in my career. Yeah. I heard that you had uh, some problems with your self-confidence in the past. How did you work with that and, and how is it now? <laughs> Yeah, in college, I had a really hard time um, believing that I was as good as I was. Um, you know, I'd be ranked number one the entire season and get to nationals and just do horribly. Um, you know, my coach was able to help me believe in myself and trust my training and really just to get on the line and just run like I know I can. Um, you know, this being my first professional season, having this confidence and running the times that I'm running, um, I've gotten a lot better in believing myself and I've seen what I can do. And uh, so. Okay, any other questions? If not, oh, one more. <laughs> Just to know, you've been speaking about times, fast time to expect tomorrow. Are you targeting any? Shall we expect something special or are you not thinking about it? My goal was to, after not making the Olympic team, was to win the diamond and to break a world record, you know. Uh, so my first goal is definitely to come out there and run across that line first. Um, you know, this is my last race, so I'm going to give it all I have. So. You know, I may run a fast time. Um, we're going to have to see. <laughs> OK. Thank you very much, um, Kendra Harrison. Good luck for tomorrow. Um, forecast is very good, so condition should be fine. Uh, the diamond looks to be yours tomorrow. <laughs> and um, some interviews afterwards. In already seven minutes, we go ahead with Christian Taylor and Tiana Bartoletta. And this. They will be next on stage here. <laughs>